What is up, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, whoever is tuning in to episode two, Wild Theories and Urban Legends on Pick the Mind. Pick the Mind. I'm your host, Chet Banks, and, and today we're getting into the Wild Theories and Urban Legends on today's episode of Pick the Mind. First up, let's get into, let's get into some wild theories, starting with NASA is a lie. Some people actually believe that NASA's whole function is not to explore space, but to generate some related hoaxes. Just like how some people believe the Apollo moon landing was fake and staged within a hangar using movie props and lighting, people believe NASA uses uh, CGI photos of the Earth, Mars, and of the moon. But in reality, NASA was formed in 1958 to provide research of flight within, within and outside of Earth's atmosphere along with other purposes. NASA has launched hundreds of satellites into orbit around the Earth and the Moon, several other planets. NASA has had uh, spacecraft orbit flown by or landed on every planet in the solar system. NASA has even sent astronauts into orbit where they conduct research on the International Space Station, also known as the ISS. Another wild theory that people, a lot of people believe, actually, is uh, the Earth is flat. Flatter than a pancake. This myth is so popular that there's even a, gra uh, a group named after it called the Flat Earth Society. I guess some believers are going to going back in time where the ancients believed the Earth was flat a long ass time ago, despite proof that is that it is round, uh, in fact. These Flat Earthers claim the horizon is always at eye level, and they believe this would not be possible if the Earth was round. Which is quite bizarre. Yes, indeed. But do they realize how small they are compared to our planet, really? That's like putting a, a person the size of a molecule on a basketball. Of course it will look flat from that perspective, because you're so small and it's so big, right? Yeah. What about all the, all the planes that have flown around our planet? If the Earth's flat, where's the edge? Has anybody found the edge yet? Is anybody walking and be like, Oh, there's the edge of the Earth, right here. I found the flat edge Earth. Ironically, I heard some of these flat earthers claim the earth is flat on uh, satellite radio. <laughs> Imagine that, the irony there. The earth is flat, but we're on satellite radio. Hmm. The satellite which orbits earth, yet they believe it's flat. Huh. How dumb can you be, really? How dumb can you be? They also claim that this is no full, there, or I mean, they also claim there is no full movie of the earth rotating from space which is false because nasa has published multiple videos taken from satellites including a live video feed of earth from the iss which orbits our planet 16 times per day also do you know that satellites orbit earth yeah they constantly they are constantly in a type of like falling motion fast enough to where they won't get you know uh sucked into our gravitational pull they're just at the right speed to just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and go the earth has been known to be round since the time of the ancient greeks sometimes around sometime around 500 bc <clears throat> excuse me they saw the moon was round so the earth must be round as well sometime between 500 bc and 430 bc a man named anaxagoras or something like that determined solar and lunar eclipses and the shape of the Earth's shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse, which was also proof the Earth was round because they saw the round shadow. So, you flat earthers out there, it's round, okay? It's not flat. It's not flat like your ex-girlfriend from sixth grade. On to Planet Nine, a.k.a. Nibiru, also known as Planet X. The supposed disastrous planet the people claim is approaching Earth and will cause a pulse shift destroying nearly all of humanity. The idea was first put forward in 1995 by Nancy Leder, L-I-E-D-E-R, Leder, Leder. Nancy claims to be a contactee with abilities to receive messages from extraterrestrials from the Zeta Reticuli, or Zeta Reticuli star system through an implant in her brain. <laughs> oh, she's got an implant in her brain. She's listening to those aliens. They're telling her all about Planet X, apparently. She states she was chosen to warn mankind 
that the object would sweep through the inner solar system in May of 2003, which would destroy humanity. Well, that clearly didn't happen, did it, Zeta? Because it's 2018 now, so you're going to have to get your fact check or talk to those aliens and be like, hey, yeah, the implant you put in my brain isn't working. What'd you say? Oh, you said 2003? Shit. Oh, you meant 2023. Oh, my bad. This prediction has spread beyond Le Leader's website and embraced <clears throat> by numerous internet doomsday groups, uh, most of which linked the event to the 2012 phenomenon. You remember that? Well, that's not... That didn't happen either. This theory is not supported by any scientific evidence and has been rejected by astronomers and planetary scientists and pseudoscience and, and uh, internet hoax. Although recently, NASA's um, Spitzer Space Telescope has, has or had discovered seven Earth-sized planets, three of which are in the habitable zone of the TRAPPIST-1 system, 40 light years away, 235 trillion miles. That's a long time. <laughs> Could you imagine trying to jog that far? You couldn't jog that far. You'd die. And I thought driving to California was far. That's just... California, from where I'm at, is about uh, 300, 400 miles. Not 235 trillion. That's, yeah. But who's to say if Nibiru exists out there? I mean, it's possible. Chances are probably not. But who knows, you know? It's a big place. So on to our next topic. Alien research at Area 51. The 1996 movie Independence Day is one of the sources of Area 51 hoax which claims that aliens and their technology have been recovered from flying saucers and are being secretly studied at the base 80 miles northwest of Las Vegas. Some people in the area have claimed seeing odd lights and unidentified flying objects, which could just be top-secret aircraft and not necessarily flown by uh, aliens, which, hey, maybe they are. During one broadcast on Coast to Coast with Art Bell, I'm sure you're familiar with him, great host, great uh, radio host, rest in peace, Art Bell, there is a man claiming to be on the phone with him as he was flying into Area 51 base. Over the audio, you can hear Art telling the man to turn around immediately, but the man refused, and ten minutes in, you can hear alarms ringing from the base and the man flying the plane, claiming that they just sent out some F-16 fighter jets. As the alarms are ringing off, you can hear it in the audio. Then there was silence. <clears throat> Did he really go? Did he really, uh actually go there and get shot down it's unsure but the debate is up for speculation absolutely and now the moon iapetus iapetus the moon iapetus is a is it an alien death star iapetus is a moon of saturn that looks somewhat like the infamous death de uh, death star in star wars with a large crater that resembles the super laser focus lens of the you know the big lens that destroys planets i'm sure you're star wars fans of course the death star is a planet killing machine freaking kills machines a daily mail article published in may 2016 claims iapetus hope i'm saying that right is an artificial object crafted by aliens of course just because something looks like it doesn't mean it it, it actually uh, is it you know sorry i'm kind of stumbling over my words here doesn't mean it actually exists if it's on a movie. Come on, people. Real and crafted by aliens? The article um, cited a, uh, a photo which was taken by NASA's Cassini spacecraft in 2004. The photo shows a line around the moon's equator that resembles the uh, equ equatorial trench around the Death Star, but not as interesting as the Death Star's trench, with which has battle stations, thrusters, and docking bays in the movie. NASA says this is simply a mountain ridge, and Iapetus is actually just made up of boring old rock and ice. You know, it's just ice and rock. It's not a Death Star. But what if it is? What if it is a Death Star? And the, the Cassini um, spacecraft has flown by it many times without getting blasted from the sky, so I think we're probably good on that. Wild West Alien and UFO Encounter. Yeah, the Wild West. Oh, yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2, coming out soon. When you ask people about the first alien encounter, they, you know, they'd probably say Roswell, New Mexico, back in 1947. But did you know, back in uh, 1896, two men from Melody, California, 
reported these alien strangers, reportedly seven feet tall and very slender. According to the man named H.G. Shaw and the woman Camir, Camille Spooner, the aliens tried to abduct two men but were much too heavy to kidnap. They must have been fatties. Their attempt was foiled and the three beings leapt back into their spaceship and left. Show Shaw believes the three beings were from Mars, sent here for the purpose of securing one of the inhabitants. For what, testing? Probably those crazy medical experiments? <laughs> one year later, Texas residents claimed to have seen a cigar-shaped craft crash land outside Aurora, Texas. According to the published story, they found a body not of this world and gave it a proper burial. Well, that's nice. It's like, hey, Martha, you see that weird alien body right there that's uh, not of this world? Instead of telling everybody about it and, ex you know, let's just give him a proper burial. Aliens exist. <laughs> Red-haired cannibal giants in Nevada? Oh. According to the northern Paiute people, red-haired cannibal giants once menaced Nevada. It is said that many hundreds of years ago, barbarians would ambush the Paiutes and kill and eat them. Hmm, I wonder what they taste like. One Paiute claims to have fought these barbarians for three years before cornering them in a cave and setting it on fire with branches, burning them to death. Sounds like a folk tale, but... White settlers heading into Vanata, uh, Nanata, <laughs> Nevada weren't so sure. They just weren't sure. Nope. Guano miners, however, found human remains in the cave in Lovelock, Nevada in 1911. Many artifacts discovered disappeared, which may ha uh, be how the legends of giants uh, sprung up. While no giant remains have reappeared, that hasn't stopped the rumors, though, that the red-haired cannibals were real. Even newspapers like the Los Angeles Times reprinted the story that miners found seven-foot mummies as a fact. Now, there's some theories for you. Let's get into some urban legends. Oh, you guys heard about skinwalkers? Oh, I have. I live relatively near the, the skinwalker ranch. So skinwalkers and the skinwalker ranch. Skinwalkers, also known as Navajo witches, in Navajo culture, culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into possess or disguise themselves as an animal. Navajo people would rather not discuss this with outsiders or anyone they do not trust. Navajos say these should not be discussed because it is part of their culture. Well, I'm discussing it now. I hope one doesn't come in my room. Ugh. <sighs> Animals associated with this usually include the coyote, but can include other creatures, um, usually associated with death or bad omens. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Some claim to have seen these creatures in Arizona, Nevada, but the notorious Skinwalker Ranch is actually located near Roosevelt, Utah. It is now watched over by guards, not allowing anybody access. Which kind of sucks, because, you know, I was kind of thinking about trying to go there, checking it out, but it doesn't look like it. In 1994, Terry and Gwen Sherman discovered their dream ranch of 480 acres. It would be a fine place, or so they thought, to raise their teenage son and nine-year-old daughter. The first bizarre sightings the Shermans experienced were large, circular impressions found in their pastures. That's like a, kind of like a crop circle, I guess. Then suddenly, Terry started um, having trouble with his prized cattle, finding them dead with no explanation on how. He examined the dead cattle and all had holes drilled into the center of the left, their left eyeballs. That's painful. Terry had taken a wire to examine the depth. It went into the center of the cow's brain. <clears throat> Excuse me. His cattle seemed to be just disappearing, vanished. He looked everywhere, but they just vanished. The couple began seeing strange craft that seemed to be coming from some sort of opening in the sky. They appeared to be emitting light and spikes. I don't know what the spikes would be. Huh? That hit the ground as if it's some kind of like uh, transportation. They found cattle with its rectum cored out with a six inch wide hole and eight inches deep. That cow was gaping. 
the, um, they began seeing glowing blue balls floating around the property, making crackling sounds, like orbs, I suppose, and could move extremely fast. He shined a flashlight toward it, and it, it came over to him as if it were inspecting him. He was absolutely terrified. I'd be pretty scared, too, seeing a blue light floating around your backyard, shine a flashlight at it, and it comes flying out towards you. He even said that looking at this blue orb, it almost looked like there was a blue fluid moving around within the orb, whatever that might be. The blue ball returned later on, having uh, hovering near one of his cows and his three dogs. He had three dogs with him, and he... Uh, they took off after it in hot pursuit into some trees, then later heard a loud yelp. Because the dogs, you know, uh, were probably attacked by this orb. The Shermans, too scared to investigate, they waited until morning to go and look. So that morning, they walked in to investigate and found three burned circles where the dogs ran off to. And what appeared to be a buttery substance. Dogs turned in to butter. This was the final straw for the Shermans, and they put the ranch up for, um, they get, just got rid of it. I don't think they put it up for sale, because they didn't want to harm the next owners. The Shermans later stated that there was some really odd things about the place. All of the doors had, be, had big, heavy dead bolts on the inside and the outside of the doors, and they saw big, heavy dog chains on each of the exterior doors. They just assumed it was for the previous owner's dog that lived before them. But they said that they had four ferocious big dogs chained. So maybe they were skinwalkers. Maybe the previous owners were witches. Who knows? Terry Sherman talked. Terry Sherman later talked with the Ute Indian who said the ranch was on unholy ground and home of the skinwalkers. <laughs> there are stories of people driving near the ranch nearing about 70 miles per hour and looking out the window to see a big wolf-like creature running along the side of the vehicle, keeping up with them. That'd be, yeah, I'd probably scare the shit out of me too. I think I'll avoid that place at all cost. I'll be, I'll stop talking about it now as it's not to be talked about. Uh, I don't want a skinwalker coming in my room. So, on to the next one. Alabama. The Dead Children's Playground In Alabama, there is a graveyard with a playground for kids to play on while family members visit the loved ones. But legend has it that the spirits of children who've been buried in the cemetery since the first grave was dug there in 1822 come out to play at night. That'd be kind of creepy. It's like, Mom, I'm going to go to the playground to play with Josh. And she's like, who's Josh? Oh, he's just this ball of light that I love. He's great. He treats me well. He always treats me well. But, um, in eight, 1822, people claim to have seen orbs of light going down the slide and swings just moving on their own back and forth. And they even heard children giggling. <laughs> See, they're having fun. Even creepier is some claim that, um, Victim, victims of children who were murdered in the 60s, their bodies were found where the playground currently sits. The playground wasn't opened until 1985, so I'm sure the spirits were, you know, pretty excited to finally have a slide to go down because the children that were murdered in the 60s didn't have a playground until 1985. So, good for them. And now, Florida, the skunk ape. The skunk ape of Florida. The Everglades are filled with scary creatures from alligators and snakes and mosquitoes. Also, the skunk ape, apparently. The skunk ape. Sk sk I said skunk pape, almost. The skunk ape, said to be the relative of Bigfoot, a fully grown ape from 5 to 7 feet tall and weighs 450 pounds. You know, I'm not sure how they would know how tall or how heavy it would weigh if they haven't captured it yet. How do you know how much something weighs if you don't know if it exists? It can be detected by its horrific odor, smelling like a sun-baked animal carcass. Mm, that sounds good. Put that on a sandwich. And rotting garbage. Uh, apparently, they mostly 
eat bananas, or I mean berries, <laughs> and small animals, but have been known to ravage farms, tearing wild boars to shreds. Some believe it migrated south from the mountains and found refuge in the swamplands of Florida. You know, it could be full core. It could be just fake. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Some people say it was created by pioneers to scare off people to protect the land. But if you decide to camp there and you smell something foul, be wary. You might be encountering the skunk ape. Or your friend has really good weed. Mississippi, the three-legged lady of Nash Road. Nash Road, which has come to be known as the three-legged lady road, is located in Columbus. One story tells of a young girl who was kidnapped, dismembered, and her body parts thrown into the woods that lined the road. According to legend, legend has it, the girl's mother went searching for her daughter, went searching for her daughter, but was only able to find one of her legs. Completely distraught, the mother carried the leg up and down the road looking for her daughter. Some also believe the hauntings can be traced back to an old church that was once located there on the Nash Road and is no longer in use, and as they say a, a satanic cult could have used it for human sacrifices. According to several witnesses, motorists that stopped at the church would turn off their headlights and honk uh, their horn three times to entice the three-legged lady to, to make an appearance. She would jump on the car, headbang the roof, then race the car to the end of the street while hitting her body into the car the entire time, and some people claim their car had dents afterwards. People also claim her third leg seems to be rotting and stitched to her body. And then some people also say that her mother stitched it to her body, but, you know, what can you believe uh, any of this? The leg is also said to be from a former lover. And that takes us out of the urban legends and into interesting facts. Interesting facts. How interesting. Interesting fact number one. There is a large area of space that is devoid of any galaxies or light called Eridana Supervoid. I never heard it called that, but I've, I'm familiar with the Boo, Boo Uti's Void. It almost looks like it's spelled like boots, but Boo Uti's Void. That is about 1 billion light years across. It has been theorized by cosmologist Laura Marcini to be an Im imprint of a parallel universe. That is a lot of empty space. But that would be awesome if it was a parallel universe. You know, that's... Uh, I like the deep thinkers. Interesting fact number two. There are more variations in the game of chess than there are atoms in the known universe. Are you kidding me? Oh no. That's crazy, huh? Interesting fact number three. The loudest events in the universe are starquakes. The largest ever recorded was in 2004. The star Magnetar SGR 1806-20 adjusted itself with the force equal to a 22.7 on the Richter scale. Now, if you try to wrap your head around that, that's a little difficult because the largest um, earthquake on Earth is, uh, was about 19, or 19, 9.5, and uh, apparently this is 22.7. And the star's name is SGR 180620. I don't know how they come up with these names, but right on. It happened 50,000 50, light years ago. I mean, away, 50,000 light years away from Earth. If it were to happen 10 light years away, it would have destroyed all animals in life. Or, I mean, green life, plants, and all such a thing. Yep, all such a thing. But that's insane. 10 light years away is still hella far away. And it still would do that. Interesting fact number four. I like this one. This one's pretty sweet. There is a theory proposed by many physicists that our universe may exist inside of a black hole and that every black hole in our universe may contain a totally new universe. Wrap your head around that one. That's pretty awesome. I guess that's kind of goes along with like parallel universes. Um, if our universe is in a black hole, and other universes are in other black holes, then maybe each universe 
is like a sphere. Like if you could take our universe and zoom out to see the entirety of our universe, maybe it would be a giant sphere because apparently everything's a sphere. Like Earth is a sphere, Moon is a sphere, planets, stars. So maybe our universe is a sphere too. And then maybe there's a bunch of different universes all collected and it's just so crazy to think about how deep you can get and that's what i love to talk about interesting fact number five a british woman with big old titties had two sniper scopes attached to her big old breasts so she could snipe kittens with milk from far distances no i'm just kidding uh i made that one up obviously but that will do it for episode two, and if you're interested in episode three, we're going to pick the minds of the Colombian cartel. Much love, and peace out.